This video is sponsored by World of Tanks. Be sure to stay tuned until the end of the video for a special bonus code to unlock four free premium vehicles, 250,000 free credits, and a week of premium access to World of Tanks when you sign up today. What is going on my friends, Hank here, and today we're going to talk about one of my favorite subjects to model, and one of my favorite subjects to research about World War II, the iconic medium tank M4, aka the M4 Sherman. The Sherman is perhaps one of the most recognizable and prolific tanks in the history of warfare. Employed by the militaries of nearly 50 nations around the world throughout its six decade service life, it's no wonder that anybody who knows anything about military history can recognize this beauty. Because of its widespread use, the Sherman is also one of the most modeled tanks on the market today. Model manufacturers from Tamiya, Academy, Italeri, Meng, Oscar, and many, many more all have their own Sherman variants for builders at every skill level and covering just about every theater of war. So today, we're going to be taking a look at my top five favorite Sherman tank kits to build, as well as talking a little bit about why they make the list and why I think you should build up each one of these for yourself. With that said, let's get started with Sherman number one. All right, so the first Sherman on our list today is a true modern classic. If you build 135 scale armor kits at all, there's a good chance you've already built this one up already, so it's a perfect choice to head off our discussion. This is none other than Tamiya Kit 35346, their M4A3 E8 Sherman EZ8 from the European Theater of World War II. This kit, along with Tamiya's other M4A3 offerings, is a really strong option for anybody from your true novice builder to your more advanced veteran modeler. The engineering on this kit is just about perfect. There aren't too many parts in here, so you can spend a good amount of time on the painting and weathering phases, and it's a great base for aftermarket upgrades and accessories. This variant of the Sherman, commonly known as the EZ-8, is often one of the most widely depicted variants of the M4 that we see in movies and video games about the Second World War, and that's for a few reasons. The E-8 designation of the Sherman was one of the last major variants produced by the U.S. in the final months of World War II, and it was a test of the new HVSS suspension system. They made about 5,000 of them starting in the summer of 1944. A lot of these saw service in the push into Germany at the end of the war, and many, many more survived after World War II to be activated again for combat during the Korean War. And after that, a lot of these were sold to US allies all over the world for service in their own militaries. They eventually ended up in museums all over the place, often backdated to look more like World War II tanks. The Sherman tank that's central in the 2015 movie Fury, starring Brad Pitt, is also supposed to be an M4A3 E8, even though it's technically an A2 model with the EZ-8 suspension system. My most recent build of the kit, right here, draws inspiration from that film. I've added a full crew, as well as some applique log armor on the sides. I had a ton of fun building this one up, and I'm planning on doing another one shortly here. And if you're interested in hopping into the commander's hatch of the EZ-8, it's one of the more than 800 playable tanks in today's sponsor, World of Tanks. It's one of my favorites to play in the game. There's a few variants of the EZ-8 that are available, and they're all great, fast, mobile flankers at Tier 6. So that's our first Sherman model on the list today, the modern classic Tamiya M4A3 E8 EZ-8 in 135 scale. Moving on to number 2. Alright, so our second kit here today is rolling back the clock a little bit to the very first variant of the M4 Sherman to hit the battlefields of World War II. This is the M4A1. Specifically, this is the Oscar Kit 35010, their M4A1 Sherman mid-production. I love the M4A1. A1s have this beautiful rolling one-piece cast upper hull. The early ones have this three-part bolted transmission cover, the small early model gun mallet, and they're beautiful. If you're a tank nerd like me, it's so cool to look back at these earliest models of the Sherman and know where the development of the tank is going. You can really appreciate how simple of a design this was, but how well the system was set up to grow and evolve as it needed to throughout its service life. Now, the kit itself, in the front here, is a little bit more complicated than the last one we talked about. There are quite a few more parts, smaller sub-assemblies, and as a result, a lot more detail, but it's totally worth it. If you've never built an Oscar kit before, they're really top-notch. Not ideal if you're a true novice, but if you've been at this for a little while, then definitely give one of these a go. All in all, a fantastic build experience that I highly recommend. I built this one up as part of a group build I hosted a few years ago. It depicts an M4A1 of the 1st Armor Division in North Africa. Really love this build. And interestingly enough, playing this tank in World of Tanks is one of the big reasons that I got back into scale modeling nearly 10 years ago. I've always been really interested in World War II, and one day after work I downloaded World of Tanks and started playing as a way to relax, and I just got hooked. And one of my favorite tanks to play in the game has always been the M4A1 at Tier 5. 
It's so fun to cruise around and blast away at other tanks, especially with the big 105 millimeter howitzer. It's just a great time. Eventually after playing one day, I decided to pick up a model kit and try and build one of these tanks up so I could put it on my desk. And here we are. So thank you World of Tanks. And again, be sure to stick around until the end of this video for a little bonus courtesy of the folks over there. So that's my second kit on this list, the Oscar M4A1 in 135 scale. Fantastic kit, cannot more highly recommend this one. Moving on to number three. All right, so our next model kit on the list here today comes from the company Italeri. It's a little bit less well known than it's to me a counterparts, but this is Italeri's US Marine Corps M4 Sherman. And I love this kit because it fills a couple of really important gaps in the Sherman tank kits on the market today. First off, as the name suggests, this kit builds up to depict a Marine Corps tank. Nearly all of the World War II Sherman kits you see on the market today are from the European theater, which is fine, of course, because that's where the vast majority of tank combat was during the Second World War. But there were also a lot of tanks used in the Pacific, and it's pretty hard to find a good Sherman kit that fits that bill. But this Italeri kit here does exactly that. It offers a few really interesting options that you don't see all the time on the Sherman tank market. First off, you can build it up as either a diesel-powered M4A2 variant, which is what I did right here, or you can build it up as an M4A3. The diesel M4A2s were nearly all shipped out as Lend-Lease tanks during World War II, with the exception of the ones that went to the Marines fighting in the Pacific, who wanted diesel vehicles. So you don't see a ton of American M4A2s. And this kit comes with waiting stacks. For seaborne operations, Sherman tanks could be fitted with these extended exhaust stacks to help the engine breathe in case they had to ford through some deep water. And for some reason, almost nobody makes Sherman kits that include these stacks. This Italeri kit has them, so I jumped at the opportunity to build this guy up. The engineering and the overall fit of this one isn't as crisp as the Tamiya or Asuka counterparts, but it didn't give me any problems during the build process. If you're looking to build up a Pacific Theater Sherman, or maybe you're just looking for a subject that's a little different from what you usually see, this is a great option. All right, moving right along here, we're up to kit number four. And this is one of my all-time favorite vehicles. I have a soft spot for this one. I'm not really sure why, I just think it's such an interesting piece of innovation and experimentation. This is the M4A3 E2 Sherman Jumbo, specifically Oscar's E2 offering in 135 scale. The M4A3 E2, like the EZ8 we talked about earlier, was an experimental variant of the Sherman designed as an assault tank. As the Allies began to push deeper into Occupy Europe and enter Germany specifically, they began to encounter more and more dug-in, heavily fortified German positions. And the army was hoping to up-armor some of their existing Shermans to help spearhead assaults on these heavily fortified bunkers and other positions. So the Fischer tank arsenal built up about 250 of these up-armored M4A3s to distribute among the armored unit, and these guys pushed the suspension and drivetrains of these Shermans to the absolute limit. The E2s weighed in at around 84,000 pounds versus the standard 70,000 pounds of most Shermans, and had armor from five to seven inches in some place. These guys started to arrive in Europe towards the end of 1944 and were reportedly very popular with their crews, though I'm guessing likely not so much with the maintenance guys. Back to the kit itself though, another beautiful one from Asuka. Honestly, one of the best kits I've ever built. I had so much fun with this one. It's a perfect balance of complexity and detail at this scale. It doesn't go overboard with tiny, tiny parts, but it does have some really crisp features. I added a metal 76 millimeter main gun to mine instead of the standard 75, some of these were upgunned to fit the 76 in the field or in the factory. And I think this thing just looks like a bruiser. You put it next to some of your other Sherman models and she just looks heavy. The Jumbo is also one of my all time favorites to play in World of Tanks. As you might expect, this thing is a beast and bounces all kinds of shots, especially when you play it hull down behind a ridge or a hill. It's currently a legacy vehicle over in the collector's garage, but geezers like me that have been playing for nearly a decade still really enjoy this one a lot. So that is our fourth Sherman kit today. Time to move on to number five and our last must build Sherman on this list. All right, here we are, number five. I couldn't make a list of my favorite Sherman kits without including this gem. And yes, this is another Oscar kit. This is Oscar's Sherman Firefly IC. We've got the Commonwealth represented here. The Sherman Firefly is another one of those absolutely iconic tanks in its own right, and I just think it's such a cool example of off-the-cuff innovation in the heat of the moment when you really need to solve a problem with what you've already got on hand. The Sherman Firefly is essentially a standard Sherman tank with the main gun replaced with this huge British 17-pounder high-velocity gun. It uses just about every cubic inch of space in the turret, and it packs a serious punch. The British came up with this idea after encountering more and more heavily armored and armed German tanks in the deserts of North Africa, 
and they used the two existing pieces of equipment that they had, the Sherman and the 17-pounder, to create this really effective Frankenstein tank killer. I'd been wanting to build up a Firefly for a really long time, and I was very happy to pick up this IC variant from Oscar. This kit also comes with tons of extra bits of track, stowage, gear, and all that jazz. You can attach it to the tank and add some extra decal and applique armor, like I've done with this guy here. I also added a bit of scratch-built hessian tape to this vehicle as well, as the crews often disguise their fireflies as best as possible to keep them safe since they were so valuable on the battlefield. And of course I would be wrong to omit that the firefly is also, of course, playable in World of Tanks. It plays quite differently from its other Sherman counterparts. She's more of a long-range sniper than a mid-range flanker, which leads to some really fun long-range shootouts. And I know that this is a channel dedicated to scale modeling. Not everybody who watches my videos plays video games, but I was really happy when World of Tanks reached out to me to sponsor a video because I genuinely think that if you're interested in tanks and military history like I am, this game is worth checking out. I don't do sponsorship ads for products unless I think you guys would really get something out of them, and this one is really cool. It's a fun way to relax, aside from building models, of course, and the best part is that it's free to play. As I mentioned, there are over 800 playable vehicles in the game, with tanks from the interwar period all the way up to some more modern vehicles like the Sheridan, the Leopard, and the Centurion. You've got light tanks, medium tanks, super heavies, tank destroyers, artillery, and all of them have a unique playstyle. All you gotta do is hop on, pick a tank, and within a few seconds you're battling it out with players from all around the world. You don't need a microphone or a fancy computer, just hop on, drive around, start blasting away. So if you're interested, you can go check out the link down in the description below to download World of Tanks. And as a special thank you for watching this video and a welcome to the game, you can use code COMBAT during sign up for some nice little perks to get you started. You'll get some great premium tanks to test out, so you don't have to start out with the little light tanks if you don't want to including the British Cromwell B to keep and play as much as you like. In addition, you'll get to test out the infamous Tiger 131, the American T-78 tank destroyer, and the Chinese Type 64, which is kind of a riff off the M-18 Hellcat, and you can see which one of those you like for 10 matches apiece. You're also going to get 250,000 credits, which is the in-game currency, to upgrade your tanks, and you're going to get a free week of premium access so you can raise through the ranks even more quickly. So if you're interested in checking this out, please be sure to use the link below and use promo code COMBAT during registration for this special offer. So a huge thank you to World of Tanks for sponsoring today's video and giving us a chance to talk about the five best Sherman tank kits on the market today, in my humble opinion. If you're interested at all in scale modeling, particularly armor modeling, you gotta give these kits a try. There's a nice spread of kits here for all skill levels and subjects, so I hope that at least one of these piqued your interest. So let me know in the comments below if you agree with this list or if you think there are any Sherman kits that I missed that you think are also must builds. Thank you for watching and until next time, be well, happy building, and maybe I'll see you on the World of Tanks battlefield.